Hello everybody, in this SUP Border video we're going to be having a look at the updates of the Yellow V ice up range in 2022. We did review the Yellow V boards back in 2020. A lot of you were very interested in this very new and fresh looking type of paddle board. Very standout and distinctive with their black and the yellow heartbeat line going through the middle of the board. It's good to see some nice updates this year with the bag and the boards being lighter and stiffer than they were before. A little bit of background information about Yellow V. They're based in Denmark. They've been making paddleboards for probably two to three years now. So they're very much a, a newer paddleboard brand. But as I said before, they are making a very distinctive, different looking paddleboard. And many of you have already bought paddleboards from maybe the last review we did, or you've just got to know the brand through the last couple of years. They still have the three boards in the range. They have the Heartbeat 8, the Heartbeat 9, and the Heartbeat 11. This year they have done some really nice improvements to the boards. The boards are all lighter than they were last year and the stiffness is really good as well. But also you get a much better bag with the packages this year as well. The bag before was a very simple bag that you just held your board together. Now the bag's much better and it's actually a bag that you're happy to carry it for a little trek maybe to find a, a secluded place for you to go explore with your stand-up paddleboard. Before I go into the boards in more detail, you also get the really neat two litre dry bag with a board game that is unique for each of the paddle boards. You also get a pack of cards, something very different than we haven't seen on any other brand before. You get a kayak paddle attachment now, so many of you might be wanting to sit down and use your sup as a kayak. So Yellow V have answered that and given you a spare blade that you can put on the top of your adjustable paddle. One of the really nice features that they had last time we tested it, instead of packing their boards up with plastic or paper, they actually pack their boards up and they come to us with a towel wrapped around the board. It's like a really big, good quality towel. This year the paddles are even better, they're even branded up with yellow V on them. That's a really nice thing, you can either wrap your board in the towel as you roll it up, or you can use your towel for other things. But it's just a nice feature, they have that, it really looks at sort of the environmental message. So there's very little plastic in the packaging with these boards. When it comes to pumping your boards up, the pump that they supply it with is a two-way pump. What that means is it pumps on the upstroke and on the downstroke to get a lot of air into the board. And then when the pumping gets hard, you can take the nozzle out of the back and you can just pump on the downstroke. The pump is all nicely logoed up with their Yellow V logos. It's probably a little bit more basic compared to some other pumps on the market, but it is adequate at getting the air in the board. If you're pumping up the bigger board, the nine foot or the 11, it is gonna take a little bit longer to get that board up to the top inflation. The recommended inflation pressure for these boards is sitting around 15 PSI, but they do actually have a maximum recommended PSI rating of 20 PSI, and they do actually put a note on their valve saying that if you're not using it in really hot conditions, because if you are gonna be using a black board in really, really hot conditions, that will affect the actual temperature of the inside of the board and the pressure as well. But we did do the last review in some really extreme heats, and we did have our boards sat in the sun for an hour and a half just to see what happened and there wasn't any problems there with the last boards we've tested. We've tested these boards in winter so we couldn't really do that same test. All the boards come with the same sliding click fin system. You see this sort of fin system with lots of other brands. Having three fins that are quite stiff does offer you a good amount of tracking through all of the boards. And if you wanted to maybe get into a bit of a surfing with the smaller nine foot or the kiddies board maybe, it is gonna offer you a bit more performance having three fins, having a fin out on the rail there. So going into these boards in a bit more detail, looking at the Heartbeat 11, that is 11 foot long, it's 31.5 inches wide, it's 6 inches thick and it's got a volume of 322 litres. When we weighed that board, it's fairly lightweight, it comes in at 11 kilos and it retails at 670 euros. So in summary, this board is actually lighter than last year's board, which is one of the downsides to these boards. They're a little bit heavy. So this board is much, much lighter. Therefore, it's way easier to transport and you've got the better backpack. So it's easier to carry long distances with or without the board in the backpack. And the 11 foot this year actually comes with a windsurfing universal joint attachment screw thread up at the front of the board as well. 
the stiffness of this board when we pumped it up to 15 psi to put it in our deflection test which is where we put these boards on a gap of 1.5 meters apart and then we put a weight of 75 kilograms in the center and then we measure how much the board dropped the deflection of these boards is actually fairly strong at 11 millimeters. The stiffest boards we ever tested have been around seven and the most flexible boards are sitting around mid 25 millimeters. So it's a fairly stiff board and it's fairly lightweight as well. Because of that, it's gonna offer paddlers sort of moderate weights up to 110 kilos could be riding this i would say the sweet spot for this probably sitting around 75 to 95 kilos really that's going to be the optimum weight for this board what could you use this board for well you could use it for pretty much absolutely everything because it's 11 foot long it's got a little bit more length than the other boards not got too much width there so it's going to offer you a good amount of glide still an okay amount of stability if you are going to be wanting to paddle a little bit further do all round paddle boarding maybe even doing a bit of yoga doing a bit of touring this sort of board is fully set up for that there is handles and bungees galore on this board which is really great to see you don't usually see boards of this price point and this size with that amount of handles and bungees the handles make it really easy to transport the board down to the water obviously if you're paddling with friends it's even easier because one of you can take the front the back or the sides if your boards are loaded up with loads of cargo it makes transporting it really really easy the only negatives we found for the Heartbeat 11 is the handle is offset, which makes it easier to carry down to the water's edge. But because the handle is offset, you probably find that when you're standing in your normal paddling stance, your feet will be almost directly over the handle, which can be a little bit off-putting. It's not so bad if you've got boots on, but if you're bare feet, you might want to jiggle your feet around to not be exactly where the handle is. It might not be a problem for everybody because if you're a different weight, you might be moving your feet around and balancing it differently on the board. Next up we have the Heartbeat 9. This is a very different shape compared to the 11. It's 9 foot 5 long, it's 34.5 inches wide and it's 6 inches thick. The volume is 292 litres and that retails at 618 euros. That again is lighter than last year's and that's coming in about 9 kilograms. The deflection test is the same as the 11 foot board. Because that board is relatively short and quite wide, it's going to offer a very different feel on the water compared to the 11 foot. It's got much more rocker in that board, the curve of the board from front to back. So it's going to be better for doing more extreme activities. So maybe if you want to get into white water paddling, paddling in rivers, surf paddling, if you want to turn around the board more, be slightly more dynamic with your paddling. And definitely if you are wanting a more stable board because it's got that extra width, it's going to take riders up to probably 130 kilos without a problem. The sweet spot weight for that, probably 85 kilos up to 120 kilos. I say 85 kilos, you could be lighter and use this board but because it's so wide you might not need that extra stability unless you are really wanting to take it white water paddling or get a really stable board under your feet this could be an interesting shape if you're 110 115 120 kilos and you want to get into sup surfing and you want an ice up this could be a board that you could be looking at because there isn't many other inflatable paddle boards of that width with the rocker line that you could take sup surfing so for many of you out there that might be an interesting board for you the downsize to that 9.5, when we tested that board, the, the handle was offset, which is really nice because it's such a wide board. But unfortunately, the handle wasn't balanced in the middle of the board at all, which did mean that we have to counteract that when we were walking down the beach. But I do think the Heartbeat is going to offer a lot of people a different board that isn't really available on the market. Looking at the smallest board, the Heartbeat 8, this is very much aimed as a sort of more of a kid's board, but really I would say it's just a lighter person's board. It's the same shape and style as last year's board. It's eight foot long, it's 29 inches wide, and it's only four inches thick. The volume's 153 liters, and it retails at 412 euros, and that weighs 8.5 kilograms. It's still got the same characteristics as the other boards, loads of handles, bungees up at the front there so if you've got any budding tourers or kids that want to take their own stuff then it's going to be well suited to them also having the extra handles does mean it's really easy to get in and out of the water because if you are a lighter paddler maybe you're really a young paddler you might find carrying these boards a little bit hard work but with two of you or three of you or carrying it with a parent way way easier having the extra handles on the board 
But remember, this might not be just a kid's board. If you weigh 50, 55, 60, 65 kilograms, this style of board is still gonna be really good for you. It's gonna be lower in the water than these bigger six inch thick boards. It's gonna offer you a lot more performance. So definitely, if you're in that mid 60, 55 kilos weight bracket, being a child or not, this sort of smaller baseboard could be a lot of fun for you. It's obviously not gonna track as well as and have as much glide as a longer baseboard, but it is gonna do relatively well for your body weight. And if you wanted to get into surfing or other sort of sports like that, then the smaller board would be a lot of fun with its three fin setup and its thinner base rails. Some of the other stuff you get as standard with a package, your three-piece paddle is fully adjustable. It's aluminium. It's got like a carbon sort of fake print on the paddle blade. It actually does look quite cool, but the paddle blade itself is just a basic nylon paddle. The good thing about that is then you haven't got to be too precious about your paddle blade itself. The paddle blade is just an adequate shape to get you into paddle boarding. Definitely if you get into it more, you're probably gonna upgrade your paddle pretty quick. It is an aluminum shafted paddle, so it isn't gonna offer you that much performance. And if you do put a lot of weight into the paddle or you're a heavier paddler, you may find that you bend that aluminum shaft very easily. So it's probably worth you moving up to a glass fiber or a carbon shaft if you can. As standard, you get a nice coiled leash to keep you in contact with your board. And also, if you're looking to do more kayaking with your board, you can actually buy a kayak seat attachment as well that clips onto the D-rings on all of the boards. If, remember, if you're not watching this video on the full SUP Border Post, there's lots more information on there about these boards. Finishing off with a little summary for us about Yellow V. Yellow V have done some good improvements into 2022. It's nice to see these boards lighter and still with a good amount of stiffness. It's nice to see all of the handles that they have in place, the bungees, the D-rings, and a really nice thick EVA deck pad. Uh, the quality of the board is completely acceptable at the price point. It's not as well finished off as boards at twice the price, but then that's something you're going to expect. The pump and the paddle are a little bit basic, but they're gonna easily get you on the water and get you into paddleboarding. And the boards themselves do look very standout and stylish, and they're gonna get a lot of attention as you walk down the beach. The three boards are very much designed for different people. The 11 foot is gonna get a lot of people on the water for the first time, but the nine foot is an interesting shape that I think a lot of heavier weight paddlers are gonna get a lot out of in a lot of different disciplines. And definitely the younger or the lighter paddlers are gonna get a lot out of the Heartbeat 8. I hope you found this review interesting and informative. If you've got any feedback about Yellow V, please get it down in the comments below. We'd love to know your feedback. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on another Subboarder video real soon.